Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial in which we're going to look at how to apply materials to objects. So to start off with, we're going to delete the default cube and we're going to add a plane. Resize, scale up and then go down to the materials tab and you'll notice that there's no material slot. So click the plus icon to add a new material and then change the base color to red. Then rename it to red. You'll notice the color doesn't change, so we need to switch to material view or render view. And you'll notice in render view, we can see the lights and reflective surfaces, whereas in material view, it's just flat colors. So now we're going to add another object, press shift A, and we'll add the Suzanne monkey head. I'm going to reposition the camera, so if you press shift and apostrophe, you can go into walk mode and just walk around with the WASD keys. Then I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier, and I'm going to smooth the monkey head using smooth shade. Now I'll apply a new material to Suzanne, and I'll change the base color to yellow. Rename this to yellow and I'll duplicate the plane and I will rotate it 90 degrees so that it becomes a background for our monkey head. And I'll remove the material that's already on this object because it was duplicated. Add a new material and change the color to green this time. I'm going to move the light in front of Suzanne and then when we switch to render mode we can see the light in front casting the shadow behind. If you click on your render settings, then turn on screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, and bloom just to see the difference that those features make when you switch them on. However, when those are on, it would take longer to render. Okay, let's delete the two planes and the monkey head, and we'll add a new object, this time a default cube. We'll reposition it so it's in the view of the camera. Press zero to switch the camera view. Now I'm going to go into edit mode, press tab, right click on the cube to subdivide and increase the number of cuts to two. So we have the basic three by three squares on each side of the cube, like a Rubik's cube. So now we're going to create some new materials in the material slot. And each time I'll just rename it. So we'll start with red, then green. And what we're going to do is apply these to the different faces of the cube. So we've got blue, yellow, and you'll notice that red and yellow have a zero, zero, 001 after them, which is because we already created red and yellow earlier for the plane and the monkey head. We'll add a white one and finally an orange. And these will be the different faces of the Rubik's Cube. So now just click on the base color, change red to red, Use the color picker to select the actual colors. Green, blue, yellow, white's already white, and then choose orange. Now we go into edit mode again. Select face select mode, and then hold down the shift key, and you can multiple select individual faces on each side of the cube. So I'm just rotating and selecting faces on all four sides, and then the top and the bottom. And so I click on a different color, and then when you're in edit mode, you'll notice that the assign button is there. So when we click that, it will assign the new color to the selected faces. So I'm going around again now, selecting random faces on each side, and I'm going to apply a different color this time. Again, select the color in your material slot, click assign, and the color will be applied automatically. So once we deselect those faces, we'll see the color more clearly. Now we'll click on some more faces, apply white to those, and basically just go around the cube and make sure you've got a kind of random distribution, something like a Rubik's Cube would have. Not a solved Rubik's Cube, obviously. And we'll apply, finally, some orange spots. And I think that orange is a little bit too light, so I might just click on the base color again and we can make it a bit darker more like it would be on a real Rubik's Cube. So that's looking all right. And you can obviously choose whatever colors you like. And I'm switching to material view so we can see what it looks like. 
and the render view gives you a preview of what the final render would look like in real time. So next I'm going to add some dividing lines. So what we can do is to first of all press Shift D to duplicate the cube and then on the second cube we're going to add a modifier which is called wireframe. And you'll notice that it creates a wireframe mesh in between the faces on the cube. So I'm going to add a black material color to the wireframe, which sits neatly on top of the original cube and divides the individual faces like it would be on an actual Rubik's cube. Finally, we're going to animate the cube a little bit. So we need to join the wireframe with the original cube. Make sure you select both objects. Hold down shift and then left click on the wireframe and the original cube, then press command J or control J to join those two together. To animate, just go down to your timeline, make sure your playhead is in frame one and then in your 3D view, press the I key and choose location rotation or lock rot. That means that you can animate the location and the rotation of the cube. So that would be our starting point. Then I'm going to move forward to frame 50 and I will press I again, which means that it will end up in the exact same position that it started. And finally, I'll go to frame 25 and I'll just rotate the cube a little bit randomly so that we get some movement. And you'll notice in the timeline that Blender automatically enters the keyframes where we want them to be. And now we can play back the animation just to preview what it will look like. And we need to change the end frame to 49. The reason being that when it gets to frame 50, it would go back to frame one. So there's no gap in the animation loop. Now we can go into our output settings, change the output folder to our desktop, and then change the output type to FFmpeg video. You could choose MPEG uh, for the encoding type make sure it's H.264 and then you can adjust the other settings if you like to get lossless increases the quality. You can make it encode as fast as possible or I just choose good for now. And then we can click on the render menu and render the animation out. It'll take a few minutes to render because Blender will render each frame individually. We've only got 50 frames so it won't take too long. Obviously, the faster your graphics card or your GPU, the faster the animation will render. And there we go. So this has been a tutorial to introduce you to materials in Blender and how to apply them to objects and also to individual faces in edit mode.